Hi everyone, it's May Brock from Trader. Thank you for joining my live trading session where you are about to see me trade live and watch my PA live. The market is about to open. I'm watching the market right now, pre market time, watching for big movers such as, as you can see here, Nvidia, GME, Coin, and IBM. All of these are candidates for my upcoming trade right now when the market is going to come uh, alive. Now, I'm watching these stocks mainly because they are big movers. So, I'm watching this fantastic column explore platform uh, pre-market gainers losers and as you can see here there are plenty of candidates like the first one would be probably nvidia with 14 million shares in volume pre-market time and there comes coin and others so i'm looking for big movers stocks that could move during the trading session and of course watching the daily to start with now if you can see nvidia here you can see that recently last few days it came down and it looks like interesting we're not used to seeing nvidia coming down right now moving to one minute candles watching the market in one minute candles as i normally do for the first 20 to 30 minutes so changing all my charts to one minute candle right now now watching this gap in nvidia it's interesting but i don't like the fact that it's coming down I needed to move up in order to trade it. I needed to move up. Therefore, I will have some kind of a reversal later, hopefully. Now, Nvidia is down almost 3%. It's kind of okay. I would rather see it down more than 3%, but it looks like it's getting there. Anyway, it's a big gap. It's a very interesting trade, and it should be my main candidate for today, assuming it's going to move up and then comes down. As you can see, the first candle is red, second candle is slightly in green, and it's getting greener, which is great, because the more it will move higher, the more likely it will be to fail. I'm looking for the failure. I'm lo not looking for Nvidia to move up and close the gap. It may do that, but then it will not become a candidate for me to trade. Stocks normally, uh, which move up, have a gap of uh, less than 1%, maybe sometimes up to 2%. On the other hand, I've got IBM, which gaps up. It could be a very, very interesting trade. And uh, we also have coin coming down. But again, this stock is down 4%. It looks interesting, but again, I need to see it moving up in order to have this reversal as it comes down again. Well, I don't have it right now, but I'll wait and see. Um, I thought GME is going to be an interesting candidate. Started down 3%, but as you can see, it moved up. Now it's uh, down just 1%. And uh, just maybe, if it's going to reverse, it could be interesting. The first and most important thing always is to watch the S&P 500. As you can see, the S&P started slightly down. But as you can see here, the S&P is just down 0.05%. But look at the Nasdaq, it's down 0.3%. Now, is this an indicator that the S&P is going to come down too? It could be. Anyway, I'm watching all of them right now, looking for um, an interesting trade. And of course, I would like to trade with the market direction. It always extremely helpful because um, you know 60% of the volume that comes up in the market comes from institutional traders and they watch the S&P 500 in five minute candles. Now take a look at Nvidia, beautiful green candle. I love this green candle. I also like this red candle and I'm starting to <clears throat> kind of plan my trade right now. Um, now again, I'm looking for a failure. Nvidia started with a very big gap down, around 3%. And most likely, it's going to come down. I'm not interested in NVIDIA moving up. I'm interested in NVIDIA coming down. So I'm starting to plan my trade. Uh, right now, the highs is around $124. And if it's going to continue up, then, well, honestly, I don't care. And I'm thinking, what would be the point where I would like to short Nvidia. So I'm thinking around 123.30, maybe 123.40. So if I'm going to have a stop at around the high, which is currently just over 124.15, I may be ris risking something like a dollar here. So I need to plan my trade and assuming it's going to trigger, then I'll probably be risking again one dollar. If I'm going to short it under 123.30, again, that's what comes up in my mind right now, live, as I trade. And it's important for me to express this idea to you so you can understand, um, you know, my mindset. So again, if I'm going to short it under 123.40, 30, something like that, and stop over the highs, then 
I'm going to be losing one dollar. Looking at uh, coin, same same thought. Right now the highs uh, is around 220. It's down 2.9 percent. If it's going to come down at around 217.50 or so, I would like to short it. So if the highs is 220 then that's two and a half points two and a half points i should probably trade it with 1000 shares if i'm going to trade it with 1000 shares i'm going to be risking 2500 it's a big gap down it's very interesting it's actually a bigger gap than nvidia which makes it more likely to come down but we'll have to see about that so anyway that's my mindset right now trying to plan the trade these are the biggest movers of the day watch them pre-market time and I'm also watching on the side right over here I'm watching several other stocks which are gappers but again big gappers come on my main chart these four stocks that you're seeing right over here and again trying to uh, plan my trade so again 217.50 and a stop over 220 I could probably put my stop down a little bit so it's going to be around two points risk with 1000 shares okay look at nvidia nvidia is approaching could be interesting real soon as you can see it moved to a new high but it's failing again same entry point i thought about earlier around 123.40 or so stop could be over here 124 uh, 30 so again one dollar stop loss i'm about to short it i'm looking at the buyers and the sellers i'm about to short it i love this green candle that you're seeing right now i love it because it touched my entry point and now it's trying to move up could it just continue the uptrend maybe but if it's going to fail and it is failing look at it it's failing right now it's failing i'm shorting i'm short 2000 shares i'm risking one point one point means with 2,000 shares, obviously, $2,000 risk. So that's my risk. So now I'm hoping it's going to come down. I hate this green candle again. I mean, it's not coming conveniently, and I'm starting to think that this could be a very quick loser. 124.40 or 30. I could put my stop at 124.30, I think. Always on one point, as I planned. You don't have to go all the way to the highs to put a stop loss. You know, some people ask me, often ask me, uh, why, sh why don't I just put my stop over the highs, which is the obvious reversal point. You don't have to. You just have to imagine where going to be the real, st where, where it should be, where the stop should be. You know, play this game. Ask yourself, if the stock is going to move up, where would be the point of no return? So if it moves over 124.30, would this be the point of no return in which it's going to continue to move over the highs? In my opinion, yes. If the stock's going to move up and over 123.30, I think it's not going to come down. So I don't have to put my stop. I don't have to put my stop at the high of the day, which is 124.50 or so. I can put it at 124.30, assuming that if it's going to move over that limit, then it's probably going to uh, move over the highs. So your stop should be at the point of no return. What you figure is the point of no return. Same applies for coins. Getting close, as you can see here. Uh, and I'm still thinking about 217, 40, 50, something like that. I'm watching the buyers and sellers. It's very spread, as you can see. There's a big spread right now. 60 cents, 50 cents, too much, too much. It did touch my entry point, but the spread is still a little bit too high. And I kind of want to wait a little bit on that one. And again, this small green candle you're seeing right now is very important because it touched my entry and if it's going to come down and again i'm watching the buyers and the sellers here i'm looking at the spreads are smaller now as you can see 30 cents or so it's not great but it's much better than 60 cents i've seen earlier so look at this green candle if it's going to become red and it's going to come down then this should be kind of interesting okay nvidia failed to move higher kind of interesting again look it was very close to my stop loss and now look at the recent two red candles you know what comes up into my mind right now it's proving to me that it wants to come down it's proving to me that it wants to come down now 
I mean, it's, game's not over. This red candles could turn green and I could face a losing trade here. But let's just assume now that it's going to come down under 120, uh, 340. I'm preparing. I'm preparing to short another 1,000 shares. It's getting there. Now it's proving to me. And when it's, it proves me that I was right, now I just added 3,000 shares. Back to coin very quickly. It's getting there. At the same time, it's getting to my entry point, watching the spreads, kind of high, but not as high as ha they have been earlier. Sellers at 217.80, buyers 217.50, getting ready to short, getting ready. Okay, buyers are moving up, now they move down again. I am getting ready, now they're under, and I'm shorting 1,000 shares. You see they did touch under. Uh, 217.50, uh, 217.40, I got executed at 217.39, it looks good, as you can see again, it tried to move higher, failed, and now it's coming down, I'm down $260 or so, I'm not worried it should come down, now I'm up in Nvidia, $500, $600 or so, as you can see, it did come down. Now it's proving to me that it wants to come down. I just added 1,000 shares, which is what you should do when the stock is proving to you that you're right. You know, start with a relatively small number. And also, it's the beginning of the trading session. We're just 10 minutes or so into the trading session right now. Stop remains at the same place right now. However, it did prove to me that I was right, which means I should add to my risk. Now, as you can see, all of these green candles could have been a continued uptrend in NVIDIA. It wasn't. It did not uptrend. It failed, as it should be. You know, starting with, my, my plan was that NVIDIA is supposed to fail. Why? Again, because it was down 2.8-3% uh, when the when trading session was open. A lot of people are watching it, a lot of people are concerned, a lot of people made a lot of money in NVIDIA recently. So you expect a down day to be significant. You expect a down day, uh, you expect it to fail moving up. You don't expect it to move up and close the gap. Now look at it, it's coming down, I'm up $1,400, $1,600. My initial target was to make one point and $2,000. But now I just realized I'm going to have to wait to $3,000 because my one point target now stays the same, but with 3,000 shares. So it should be 3,000. And I thought for a second there that I was very close to taking my profit, which I love to. I love taking my profits real quick. I love to put the risk behind me. I love to, you know, just hold small size, continue holding small size and just waiting for a bigger move. Now, notice the lows. The lows, it's getting there. 120 T, 124, yeah, 124, sorry, 120 to up $2,400. Should I take my partial? No, I should wait for $3,000. No, 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 no. I need to break down under the lows or actually touch. You see the buyers right now and the sellers, $122.60. I'm a bit concerned from pullback right now. Lows, $122.50. I need to see a breakdown under the lows. I'm getting ready. Anyway, I'm getting ready to cover 2,600 shares, always leave some size. Here comes the pullback. I hate pullbacks. It touched the lows, touched the lows again. You can expect some buyers at the lows. There's always buyers at the lows. It's a support area. That's why it is the lows. Okay. It's moving up right now. I'll have to survive this pullback. I hate pullbacks. I'll have to survive this pullback. Okay, I don't like it, but um, you know, it's a part of the game. It's trending lower and it's likely to continue. If I would estimate my chance right now for a new low, I would say 70% or more. 70% or more. And again, look at the lows, the way it just touched it. You see the lows is written right over here, 122.50. Uh, look at this line. Exactly, 122.50. It's a semi-hole number. Semi-hole number, 122.50. You find buyers. You always find buyers at hole numbers. Semi-hole number, 122.50. And we've got a breakdown. 
And we've got a breakdown. That's good. That's good. It just touched under the lows. It's a new low now, 122.40. So it got supported just a bit. It touched a new low. Come on. I need you to move just a little bit more. 122.40 is good. I mean, it's one point, but it just touched it and bounced. I don't want to get less. You see, I've got $1,800, $1,600 right now. It's supposed to be 3000 this number. Okay, here comes the pullback. I hate it. But again, if I need to estimate my chance that this stock is going to move now, continue moving now to a new low, more than 70%. Stock that starts down 3%, very, very likely to move under the lows and continue and continue. So I hate pullbacks. I hate to go through this. Look at it right now. I'm up like $500. I was up almost three grand. I touched the three grand mark and now it's moving up. Anyway, I have to survive that. It's a part of the game. Uh, always have your idea where the stop loss should be. Right now, stop loss could be different. I don't need to take it all the way to 124.40. Right now, stop loss could be probably over 124. And again, remember the point of no return. Always think about the point of no return. If it's going to move up right now, where should be your stop? Where would be the point where if it's going to cross it, you, it's actually going to continue moving up. Always ask yourself this question. So it's no longer 124.40, it's right now 124. And I'm looking for a new law. Theoretically speaking, I could add, but I don't have any profit cushion right now. It's, uh, I've got coin, you don't see it, but I'm looking right here on the left. And coin is playing around a little bit small profit small loss just playing around a little bit so no profit cushion right now and i have to wait for nvidia and here comes the red candle come on red candle let's go down so now you know my target was one point 122.40 it's no longer let me talk about it a little bit later Watching coin here, it's looking good. I'm up like $400 right now. Hopefully it's going to continue. Look at the S&P 500. It's kind of going sideways, but uh, look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ actually moved to a new low. And that's very important because when the NASDAQ is moving down, it could drag the S&P 500. Look at IBM, it moved up. I could have traded it. It's the same idea, just a different um, direction. This one's moving up. You're not supposed to be taking it because the market's moving down and here comes my $3,000. It just moved to a new low, 122.26. Cool. I'm getting ready to cover 2,600 shares. Target should be 122, um, which is the whole number. I'm a little bit afraid of stock finding support at 122. You know, when you go through a pullback, you should reward yourself. You went through a pullback, which I did, and now it's supposed to move to a new low. That's the whole idea of technical analysis. It is moving, supposed to move to a new low. And once it moves to a new low, your target should not be one point anymore. 122.40, it should be lower. Now it's getting closer to the 122 mark. I'm getting ready to cover, but I'm giving it a chance to break down under. Here it comes, yes, we did break under. Good. Another 20 cents or so, 30 cents, cool. $5,000 in profit, getting ready to cover any sign of a pullback, any sign of a pullback. I think now, okay, covered. Left 400 shares. Look at this beautiful breakdown. Beautiful, beautiful breakdown. Very technical. Again, the whole idea was very technical to start with. Stock that starts down more than 3%, moving up, failing to move up, coming down, continues the trend, breaking down under the lows, a classic gap and go in NVIDIA. And again, remember, a lot of people are watching these stocks. A lot of people are interested, uh, you know, holding the stocks. So the, the, the fear factor is bigger. When NVIDIA is coming down, okay, started with 2,000 shares added. Now I've got a very nice winner to start with. And we're, in fact, touching new lows as we speak. Beautiful. So the last 400 shares, I'm going to give it some space, which is very, very important. You want to, you know, when you're holding a stock and you're taking a partial, you've got your profit cushion, okay? I was risking one point. I was trying to get a profit of one point, which is a one-to-one -one risk reward. But then you've got the last 400 shares. Sometimes I'm, 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 I'm getting more profit for the last 400 shares than I did for the initial um, profit I just took. 
So, you know, just let it ride, let it ride. I don't have the concern right now. So if this 400 shares are going to move up, my stop is likely to be right now at approximately the point where I started this trade, which means I'm not going to lose on the 400 shares, on the last 400 shares. I'm going to have a stop somewhere at my entry point, which is right over here. And that's going to be my stop loss uh, for the last 400 shares, which means whatever I took as a partial, partial profit will, will remain my profit. And, uh, you know, um, again, you have to ask yourself, what would be the point of no return? What would be the point where if the stock's going to move up right now, you should have your stop loss and you could use a stop in the system. Normally, I'm very much against using a stop in the system, but I'm not going to watch this stock a lot. And, you know, I've been trading for right now for 20 minutes or so. I don't want to st stick around too long no reason so i'm going to do something that i don't do during the first few minutes i'm going to use a hard stop i'm going to use a hard stop for the last 400 shares and again i'm looking at the chart and i'm asking myself where would be the point of no return so i'm saying 124 30 or so maybe 124 40 i'm not sure okay 400 shares stop order in the system setting the numbers always check the numbers always check the numbers so now i'm entering the number here let's put it on 123.40 yeah somewhere around here actually i could do it a little bit lower no reason to go all the way to 123.40 could be 123.30 and yeah let's do 123.31 always add one cent over you know this whole numbers are important this is not a whole number not even a semi whole number but you know a cent over 30 zero is always important check the numbers again always check check the price 123.30 yes check the numbers 123.30 check the number of shares 400 stop orders i'm minus 400 which is i'm short 400 click the button and now as you can see here i've got the order in the system waiting uh, just in case it's not going to move up now i can walk away from my computer i don't need to stay here i just realized the profit of 3800 dollars for my first trade still i've got uh, 400 shares uh, riding hoping it's going to continue i've got my profit cushion at this point i've got my profit cushion i don't need to worry but i do have another open trade in coin which is not doing that great i'm down 360 dollars and i'm thinking also where should be my stop loss in uh, coin no longer the highs definitely no longer the highs so it could be something like 219 so i could be losing one dollar sixty cents so 1600 dollars i've got 1000 uh, shares short so i i just had around four thousand dollars in uh, nvidia sixteen hundred dollars i'm gonna finish in green today so i'm gonna finish up like twenty four hundred dollars worst case scenario honestly i think coin is likely to continue down yes i am disappointed that it does not do it right now it should have but look it's kind of holding down uh the market's not uh, does not look like it's going to move up my entry point 217.39 stop loss 219 i should be good with that so as you can see here i'm going to finish in green which is a very nice 20 minutes for me not that hard but you know, when you start trading, always start trading with a demo. I'm trading with the Colmex Pro platform, which I believe is the best platform uh, for me anyway. And there's links here if you want to open a Colmex account. Just please remember the trading is extremely hard. So please start with a demo account. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you in my next videos. And please hit that like button for me. Thank you. See you again.